Hey guys, welcome back to Stock Tricks with Nick. We had another wild week in the market as we had major Q4 earnings reports and the coronavirus getting worse. So let's jump right in. Over the weekend, Bitcoin broke out of a nearly seven month bearish trading channel and is up 10.3% the last seven trading days. See, China's stock market's been closed all week due to the coronavirus and that money has to flow in somewhere. The virus infected the US markets as well, with S&P 500 gapping down 1.7% on Monday, a continuation of Friday's fall. But then, investors realized that all the big names were reporting earnings this week, and the stocks rebounded. Although stock analysts were split on Monday, it was actually boxing analysts that were the most profitable, as they declared Triple G the clear winner of Q4, as the stock beat market expectations and popped up 6.8%. Apple kept their foot on the gas, reporting another earnings beat on Tuesday, propelling the stock up 2% at the open. Before Friday's freefall, the stock was up 30% the last three months, meaning they added $300 billion to their market cap in that time. Speaking of stocks that rocket up, Tesla proved that gravity just doesn't apply to them as an earnings beat on Wednesday launched their stock up another $50. Currently, Tesla stocks are up 155% from the Q3 earnings in last October, and they were one of the only stocks that were green on Friday. Hey, thanks Elon. Facebook and Starbucks shares both dropped despite earnings beats. For Facebook, it's because of an increase in expenses, and Starbucks fans finally tried the Thin Mint iced coffees from Dunkin' Donuts. Just before Amazon's earnings on Thursday, Jeff Bezos' ex-wife dropped $400 million of their shares. That'll stick it to Jeff, right? Oh, they crushed earnings and opened over $2,000? Okay. It'd be so funny if Jeff let it slip that Q4 was going to be a miss, just so McKenzie would dump her shares before the pop. You know, a little $40 million prank. Speaking of solid relationships, my girlfriend so lovingly told me that other guys must have been treating their loved ones really well in December, because 1-800-Flowers beat earnings, and the stock rose up 6.6%. After the markets closed on Thursday, the World Health Organization declared the coronavirus a public health emergency. From there, Delta suspended all flights to China starting February 6th, and the markets just tumbled. All day, the stocks fell until their close, with S&P dropping 1.8%. So with all this turmoil, how did my account fare? I lost $220, or 1.7%, because of two bonehead plays and the market just being terrible on Friday. My first mistake was taking a position size too large on a Beyond Meats trade, after some guy on stock twits teased me about my last trade only being 10 shares. Let this be a lesson to all of you to not let social media affect your trades. Stick to any rules that you have about entries, exit, position sizes, or strategies. This cost me $74 because I took 20 shares instead of 10, and right after I got in, the stock dropped. My second mistake was to let minimal fluctuations intraday shake me out of my put position on Abby. The stock closed below the Bollinger Band on Friday and only popped up on Monday because one of their drugs were seen as a possible coronavirus treatment. Well, that run lasted about two hours and the stock's been dropping ever since. If I had stayed in the trade until the end of the day Friday, I would be up $550. Instead, I sold on Monday for a profit of $28. $28. Okay, emotional lessons aside. Let's hop over to the E-Trade platform to do some technical analysis on my AMD, Alibaba, and Roku trades. So first, let's go over AMD. And I'm holding this over the weekend to serve as somewhat of a hedge against my short position. But I initially got into this stock on Wednesday as they had earnings on Tuesday and they gapped down. But as you can see from this candle, it has a long lower wick, which just shows that the sellers tried to come in, push the stock down, but when the price fell too low, the move was rejected and it pushed back up. So this was a signal to get in for me. I got in on Wednesday, the stock opened lower Thursday, popped back up, and then on Friday, like every other stock, it had pulled down. But like I said earlier, this is gonna serve as a hedge for my short positions going forward. Ideally, this will bounce back up, close this gap from earnings, and I'll be able to sell this profitably. Next we have Alibaba, and this was just a scalp trade for me. On Monday, the stock opened much lower, as the rest of the market did as well. But this stock pushed higher throughout the day and closed as a green candle under this blue lower Bollinger Band. That's a signal that the next day, the stock's going to open higher than it closed, which it did, and I took my profits right at the open for about a 2% gain. Finally, we have Roku. And I took away the other metrics so it was clear why I got into this trade and why I've been trading it the way I have. So as you can see, this stock has been making lower highs for a while now and has been trading in this tightening wedge. And then one day the stock dropped and broke through this. So I actually picked up two put positions on Monday when it broke through the support that 
had bounced off one, two, three times before. Then it bounced off that line once again. On Wednesday, I bought two calls to offset the put positions. So now I was actually in what's called a straddle. And that's where you have a call and a put. So my call strike price was at 140 and my put strike price was at 117. Cause I knew this was coiling up and it was about ready to make a giant move. I just wasn't sure which direction it would go. But on Friday, we got the news that Roku cut ties with Fox and the stock dropped 7.4% and has clearly broken the support line here. During the day, I sold one of my calls so I could get in more aggressively on the short side. Now, I'm holding one of the calls remaining, so two puts, one call is left. Just in case this bounces for any reason on Monday, I wouldn't just be held with a big loss. And for price targets here, first one would be this like 116.30 range, and then if that's broken, all the way down here at $98, now I'll probably take profits well before then, but those are the two support levels we'll see. Thanks for tuning in to Stock Tricks with Nick. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any weekly recaps like this or personal finance tips. The links to my Twitter, StockTwits, Trading Journal, and free stocks from both Robinhood and Webull are in the description below. This week was a messy one in the market, and the best thing to do is to learn from your mistakes, crumple the week up, and just move on. Kobe.